flower beard and this is my little tutorial about making uh, quick and easy arrows these won't be the prettiest arrows they won't be the fastest or most straight flying arrows but they're quick and they'll probably not kill you probably so what do we need we need an arrow shaft I use 10 millimeter uh, wood I think this is birch or something like that they're cheap get them by the hundred meters and just go straight to the source don't buy these and make little stores they'll overcharge you I also need three pieces of foam and take some mattress this is you measure this by wrapping it oops, twice around your piece of uh, dowel make sure you get uh, two wraps so and this is 12 millimeter you can also use 10 millimeter thing is you gotta get a radius of at least five centimeters here four or five centimeters because our next two pieces piece of uh, electric foam this is tougher and uh, closed cell foam this has to have at least three centimeters thickness and the five centimeter diameter these aren't really cut well I didn't cut them and another similar piece this one can be even a bit thicker the minimum of three here and the minimum radius of five or a minimum diameter of five these three pieces of foam a little metal disc this could be a washer and you gotta make sure that the washer isn't wider than the pole itself you don't want it to go through it's supposed to stop the shaft from going through the sponge you can also use little coins and when you make spears you use the exact same method spears or throwing spears exactly the same method except you can use some reinforced uh, pipe material it's a plastic or a rubber polymer with uh, inbred uh, threads of uh, nylon or kevlar instead of this piece and of course everything has to be bigger a thrusting spear usually has a minimum diameter of eight centimeters and a throwing spear a minimum of six it depends on your uh, local laws or regulations about those weapons and of course they don't need to be thicker there's these five centimeters thick each one of these foams so what we do take my trusty can of contact cement dip it in yep and I like to work with my hands then you can really know that you got everything right and you gotta cover the inside of this piece everything nice and easy and half of the outer diameter of course you can calculate or measure it when you wrap it around because you don't really need everything glued on the other side but you're gonna wrap it anyway in duct tape so it doesn't very doesn't matter very much of course you gotta work in some place where you're not afraid to make a mess or where you have good ventilation because this needs to dry for they say an hour but usually 10 20 minutes is okay depending on your environment of course both sides of the washer now some washers have a sharper edge and a, and a rounder edge because it's punched out of a, a piece of steel so we'll get to that when we glue it but both sides need to be d dosed with glue uh, on the hard electric packing foam you gotta put glue on both sides nothing on the on the radius just on both flat surfaces Let's make sure to take off all the axes because too much glue will prevent it from gluing properly the glue wouldn't cure put it down to dry and on one surface of this yellow foam as we call it and uh, this is just a regular mattress foam very very easy to squeeze and I would usually prefer to put the cleaner side 
on the exterior of the arrow, so the messier side, I'll put some glue on. There we go, and of course, make sure this whole area of the tip and like the top few centimeters or inches are coated with glue. And now we wait. back after 15 minutes of waiting and I also added some more glue I forgot to put on this edge uh, we're ready to go I'll take this thing this thing make sure it's flush and the, the gluey part is the one that goes in first because it's on the inside you attach it and you're gonna get messy in this so have a clean hand no glue bind it up really nice and tight and this is one of the only times you can really compress foam when you're gluing it to make LARP weapons because it loses its elasticity and but this is okay because this is supposed to support the rest of the arrowhead so came up with this thing and it's rather flat I take my little coin and I make sure that the sharp end I can't, I don't know if you can see, there's a sharper end on the top and a rounder edge at the bottom. The sharp end goes towards the surface and it covers so you can only see the wooden dowel. You can't see any other thing, that means that it's centered. Take hard foam and you glue it right on top of it. And you take the soft foam and you put it right on top of it. And this is the basic construction. This is our hitting head. This is the support. Later on after this dries, you're going to cover it in the duct tape. When you cover it in duct tape, you've got to make sure that you leave room for the air to escape here. This is an open celled foam and it absorbs the energy. It doesn't transfer it, the, the flight energy of the arrow it doesn't transfer to the guy getting hit or the girl it just escapes through the air escaping to all sides this is a close this is just to cushion it and disperse the the striking force on all this area and uh, other stuff you can do on the arrow after you're done with this part cut in a notch with a hand saw I use a hand saw not an electric saw because it'll tear it apart usually and glow soft, uh, put some duct tape fletching on it. I'll try to find an example. I have an example. Just two pieces, not three, because even though three is more historical, they'll just mess up. Because this is duct tape, this isn't really high grade stuff, and will get messed up with your bow. And unlike historical arrows, you have this big head here, and you will need more, a longer uh, fin to stabilize. Because usually the circle ones are about this long and they won't fly. It'll just flip around and travel this end forward and that's not good. And you can't get it too long or too wide because it'll just flap down and it won't work at all. And this is the exact same construction, this one here, that I'll use in our throwing spear. Just the same thing, just a bit bigger. Nice little 1 meter or meter 20 throwing spear. And... Even on our thrusting spear, this is a seven foot uh, thrusting spear, and it's constructed exactly the same. This part is the foam, open celled foam. You can see I leave these place these things open so the air can escape. And you've got this here, this is the white uh, insulation foam, the electrical electrical packing foam, and this is the support. My fiberglass rod starts right here. And I use on things that are for percussion that are going to be pushed against people. I use uh, this stuff. This is piping, uh, water pipe, or water hose actually. It has these fibers inside. You can see the mesh that will really stop and disperse the weight or the, the force when you push in and stop the fiberglass from tearing through the foam. And it's better for, for you as handheld weapons because. Once you push against the, the arrows, this 
come once and fly off. And there's hardly any risk for someone pushing this and then some more. And if you do that with an arrow, you might, even though you glued it all in place, you might slip on the little metal coin you put inside. So whenever, anything that can be used in hand, I would recommend using this. This is really tough, really tough. It's like two millimeters thick and it could almost stop knives. So a, a slipping a fiberglass pole will probably be stopped. And a little extra thing is about fiberglass bows. This is my fiberglass bow. It's really easy to make. You just take any square or rectangular uh, type fiberglass rod. I even have some extra thinner stuff here. This is a 20 millimeter on six. Uh, this is, a, I think it was 25 on five. Or, yeah, 25 and 5. And you just notch these tiny holes. I can't even see it. So tiny. Use a little handheld saw or an electric saw to make these. These are uneven. But uh, little notches on either end. Take any strong, not flexing, not, not tensile a rope this is really thick stuff we got just some wool but use nylon or anything that's nice and strong so you won't flex and you just tie it on one end with a hook and on the other end and you've got yourself a bow easy. now my this bow is actually made of several pieces that are bound together with rope just simple rope binding and because I had leftovers, so I used it. This, these are 60 centimeters long, each piece. One here, one in between, this piece, and one here. And it holds up very well, it fires very well. It's just strong enough to be good in games and not too strong. Uh, this is too short to be used as a bow, maybe as a crossbow. But the other piece, this is a 70 centimeters out of a two, 200 centimeter rod. You can just use a standalone or use this as a reinforcement for a short for a longer piece and you can bind it with a rope or with uh, electrical tape it also holds really well and uh, that's about it I'll see you next time